Welcome back to the Premier League preview show here on City TV. Benjamin and Katie are still with me and we are still at the Holiday Inn. Ben, let's talk about Arsenal. They got their first win over the weekend. They beat Watford 3-1. The display was fantastic. How much more are we going to see from Arsenal? And now that they've added Lucas Perez and Schrod and Mustafi, how good are they going to become as the season plays out? They've got very complicated fixtures to deal with. But are they ready? Is this the season when Arsenal can mix it all up and get it right? I don't quite think so. Uh, you, you look at the Arsenal team and there are quite some chinks in the armour. I, I, I feel that certain players are still not performing to that level that Arsene Wenger expected them to perform to when they were purchased by Arsenal. And I feel primarily that, that has been the issue. You look at a player like Alexis Sanchez. He's been streaky. He's been on and off. He could go eight games playing good football and then could ghost for 12, 15 games. And that's not what Arsenal needs. That's dangerous. I mean, you don't want your star man and, and going through those patches. And, and it's deceptive because it allows him to avoid being criticised. Because this is a guy who can score six games on the bounce, like I'm saying, go 10 games without scoring and then come back with a hat-trick. Score a brace the following game and then goes the next five games. It doesn't work for the team. Mesut Ozil as well, same thing. Somebody can make the argument that a player like Mesut Ozil only thrives when people like Olivier Giroud can finish up his chances. But in the last part of last season, well, we saw him come very close to breaking that Premiership assist record, but then he had this extremely dry patch where nothing was going for him, and so Arsenal suffered as a result. Those are the key guys who must come together for Arsenal. Now there's no leader in defence. I think that you can talk about Peter Cech, the goalkeeper. He will do as much, and the truth be told, he will save you at least 10 points a season. To borrow a leaf out of the page of John Terry's book. He will get you that many points. But Koscielny, a lot of people talk about him being close to world class in defence for Arsenal. I don't think he's quite there yet. I think that he is just about close to cracking the top and he needs to establish that, that um, basis or that baseline this season. Are we going to see the partnership between Mustafi and Koscielny? Will that be Arsene Wenger's star partnership? Because I still am I'm of the opinion that Wenger still hasn't figured out what his best back for really is. I think Nacho Monreal and Hector Bellerin have already told us that they are good enough for the wide areas. What combination will make sense in central defence for Arsenal this season? Skoda Mustafi and Laurent Koscielny should make uh, quite a partnership. I mean, you look at the, the pair of them, uh, both quite in their prime. Mustafi just about coming into his prime, so you know that he still has a lot to learn. And you, I mean, if you look at his attitude, he's a fighter. And that's what Arsenal need in defence. Somebody to provide more competition for Gabriel, who I think will also eventually come good. So for Arsenal, I think that they need to get the mental side of their game sorted. All this being said, you can talk about Ozil, you can talk about Sanchez, you can talk about new defenders, you can even talk about Arsene Wenger, the manager. But at the end of the day, it's about the players. I just feel that Mr. Wenger needs to demand more from some of his guys. I feel Sanchez should be giving them 15 goals a season. I feel Ozil should be contributing 10 or 12. I, I just have a funny feeling that a lot more from these guys will move us now towards a title they've not won what, since 2004, I believe. Let's talk about Liverpool, your dear old Liverpool. We saw how they played against Spurs over the weekend. Did we see an improvement from, you know, the loss to Burnley at Spurs? Or we, we still feel that Liverpool still have a few challenges with their team? I thought they played great in that first half and then they gassed out and allowed Spurs to walk their way back in, into the second half. Liverpool are an interesting team. and. Uh... I've looked at what they've done with their setup so far since the club came in last season and this season. I must say that I am impressed with the sort of vice he's made. Marco Gruic, he's not featured um, really prominently. Played against Burnley, came off the bench so against far. Burnley. Yeah. I, I just feel as if the injury he had just before the season started had a toll on him. So the manager is trying to pace him gradually towards full fitness. But when he's fully fit, I do feel that that Liverpool midfield shape will change. And Richan, will partner Marco Gruic in the long term. That's what I So see. Jordan Henderson will miss out? Will certainly mi yeah, he will certainly miss out on regular play, but I feel that he will come in to do a job as and when they need him to, depending on the basis so of the So the other positions go to Vinaldum and Sadio Mane? Sadio Mane has an automatic spot in this team from what I've seen. Vinaldum, I'm not too sure about. Philippe Coutinho, when he's fit, I think 
does have an automatic Roberto spot. Firmino as, as well. well. Roberto Firmino. So, Vinaldo will have to fight for a place in the long term. I think that this is one of those projects that will reach fruition maybe mid-season. I mean, I, I sort of feel that they are just about in year two as things stand now. Okay. Still smoothing out the rough edges. And when they hit full stride, I expect that this team can go on maybe a 15-win streak of some sort, scoring a lot of goals the way they play. So let's head downwards. Um, interesting things are happening in the middle of the table. So there's Barrow, who are beginning to figure out how to play this division, maybe a bit too quickly, in my judgment. But what do you make of them and all the others, especially that bottom three, where Sunderland, as we expected, are beginning to struggle, and Crystal Palace and Bournemouth and Stoke? Well, let me start from the bottom before I get to mid-table. And first of all, let me start with Sunderland. Believe it or not, I think that David Moyes is a genius with teams like Sunderland. I still these, think these they are, will have problems. Well, you might say what you want, but I think that if he gets in two or three decent players before the transfer window shuts, I pick Sunderland to be a solid mid-table team. Replace, a team, replace like a team like Swansea. Because one, David Moyes knows how to maneuver with teams like Sunderland. He doesn't have a lot of star power to struggle with. To, to be fair and to agree with you, if you look at their team and look at Bournemouth and look at Palace, Sunderland look like a team that should be fine. Let's see how it goes. Palace now. What are your thoughts on their first three games? Well, they've looked like Palace have looked over the last <laughs> Two wins in 2016. Also. Exactly. The lack of creativity in the team is what irks you as a manager. This team just cannot pry the opposition open. They labour match after match to get two or three yeah. chances. For a team that has Kabai, yeah. Dwight Gill is gone. So Johan Kabai, Andros Townsend, Ben Teke, ben Teke Jason Puncher, and they still cannot carve teams open. Well, Johan <laughs> Kabai have, has fallen off uh, from the creativity tables for close to two years now. So um, I'm guessing that uh, judging from his high wages at Palace, Alan Pardew and his charges will be reviewing his status in the club if his performances don't see an upside. But I do expect um, Palace to simply play to the style of players they have now. Conor Wickham is still there, Christian Bentek is still there. Big guys, get the ball in the box, play direct, try to get goals early in games or try to defend deep and get a single goal. I mean, ride out results, grind out results and they will be fine. Okay, West Brom. West Brom have made fantastic purchases. Um, Nasser Chadli, who I think was being largely underused according to the potential that I think he has, has joined a good signing for them, uh, um, Rondon, the, the Venezuelan. I think that he should have a better season than what he's having so far. Brought in for big money. I always thought he was a big time player. He's, he's underperformed for me so far, but if he can get going, Barahino can get going. West Brom, Tony Pulis side, always solid on the defensive end. They should be, they should be fine. Final thoughts on these two teams, Leicester and Spurs. What, what ratings would you give them after three games? Well, Leicester have looked like a team um, still walking out of a party. And uh, I, I feel that that's largely what it's been. They are still trying to mould um, that midfield after N'Golo Kante departed. And guess who um, appeared as the surprise? Daniel Amate. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Ghana's own Daniel Amate. Versatile. And the most important thing about Amate is his energy. Energy, energy, energy. He can run for 120 minutes if you require him to. And he does not sulk about playing out of uh, uh, his uh, more favoured centre-back position. I think that that's very, very valuable for Ranieri to have. He recovered 14 uh, balls in his first game alone, and that's a lot to talk about. I mean, for Daniel Amati, I think that if he can just keep his head down and learn as much as he can, who knows? He might not give us Kante-like numbers at the end of the season, but he might give us something even more interesting to discuss. Spurs? Well, Tottenham Hotspur will be Tottenham. I think that... Um, if they do get going, like I think they will uh, eventually, they should be a good bet for top four football still. Um, it, I mean, it will be harder than in other seasons gone by, especially of their record-breaking season last time. A season of that nature is usually harder to improve upon. But again, I insist they have a disciplined manager. They have quality players. They need to raise their mentality. They need to be, or they need to move up from a team that expects to they need to become a team that expects to win matches instead of a team that goes out there and looks like they are still trying to figure out what they are trying to do i think that if they can come out 
with that mentality they should be fine. So it's been a fantastic wrap of three weeks of Premier League football. It's beginning to look like the old order will be re-established. So there's Chelsea at the top, Man United and Man City somewhere in the mix. Arsenal gradually warming up. Middlesbrough surprising everybody. Swansea and Co struggling as usual. All of this is just in three weeks. The season will take shape. But do join us for our next preview where it gets even tastier. We look ahead to the showdown reloaded. Pep Guardiola versus Jose Mourinho at Old Trafford. It's a Manchester Derby, 10th of September. Join us. Cheers.